What is good, everybody? How are y'all doing? These shirts from Rise Just Drop, they're actually pretty fire. They got like, they're really cut well. High collar, oversized, cool design on the back. I didn't shave, bro. If I look like a goober, that's why. I don't feel like doing it just for the YouTube video. I'm about to go shopping for groceries. As you can see, this is, this is what my fridge looks like. Yeah, it's a lot of energy drinks. Um, so, in desperate need of some, you know, good protein sources. So, thankfully, there's a Harris Teeter, like, right across the street from me. I can just walk over there and then walk back to the groceries. And then I'm going to cook the steak and document me cooking it. So, let's get into it. All right, we got the uh, uh, steaks heating up the, what's, whatever it's called. I just got two filet mignons. I'm going to cook one now. What time is it? Alexa, what time is it? That was I Speak Jesus by Charity Gale. All right, Alexa, what time is it? It's 3.56 p.m. I got like two filets. They're not crazy. You know what I mean? Nothing crazy big. It's probably like eight ounce. Eight ounce. What I'm going to put on it is this wood fire garlic. And then I'm just going to put it on both sides. I'm going to talk to you guys about something important here in a little bit. Give me a second once I get this all set up. This stuff smells really good. I'm going to put it on my hand because I don't want to like spill it everywhere. I'm gonna flatten it as well because I want to kind of cook quicker. This is like no way, in, like in no way, shape, or form is this like how to cook a good steak. This is just how to cook a steak that isn't bad. But at least from to me, it doesn't taste bad. The other night I had there's this place they do half off on tomahawks on Wednesdays or something, Wednesday night or so. Got one. It was ninety dollars for forty two ounces. Obviously, a big part of that's the bone. But man, bro, that steak was one of the best steaks I've had in a minute. Again, Charlotte has some of the just most fire everything. Just, everything is just so good. Um, where, see, because I'm cutting, I would usually use butter. I'm just gonna put this low-cal olive oil spray. Just really get that up in there. Again, that's probably not the healthiest thing, but it's whatever. I got Italy in about four weeks, so I'm trying to chill a little bit with everything. But we're gonna put that on that. Um, again, it's kinda getting down to the wire. Like, this is me, I got sushi, and then I just did not eat the rice. Cause they didn't have any sashimi, so that's kinda ghetto, but I wanted a little snack earlier, but I am trying to get leaner. So I don't know if you guys have been watching the podcast channel. It's been doing well. It's been fun to do. I've been enjoying making those videos on there. It's more fulfilling for me, um, teaching about faith content over fitness. Obviously, I still do both. But I kind of want to be like, I kind of see myself sometimes when I kind of talk to you guys more intimately as like a bigger brother to a lot of y'all. Because um, I grew up as an only child, so I never got to really have that. I don't know, thing, but I've always felt the need to kind of like protect people. And it's funny because I was just listening, talking to my pastor, um, my new pastor here, Bobby, and Bobby Chandler from Authentic Church. And he was saying how a lot of times, like in the Bible, um, people fulfill what their names mean. So when I looked up the meaning of Timothy, it meant. Hold up, I brought for God. It was something like, it was like a passion for God. Or let me find, a man after, let me look. If you guys didn't know, my real name is Timothy. Not everybody knows that. Um, I'm gonna look up Timothy meaning in Bible. It means honoring God, right? And then when you look up Alex or like Alexander, it means like protector of man, protector of mankind. So for me, I'm like, because obviously you guys know me as Alex. It was funny when I looked that up after he said that, because I really do feel like a, a need and a urge to protect, especially the younger generation, because a lot of my followers and people in this industry that follow me and other people that kind of do the same thing I do are younger kids, younger men, right? And to me, in this fallen world we live in, in this generation where it seems like it's just getting darker and darker, more worldly, more sinful, just like stuff that was accepted today was not accepted as much, you know, openly 10 years ago. I feel the need now more than ever to be more open about what I believe in, what I feel, not even just religiously, but like what I really feel, because as before, I'd be afraid of getting a kickback and like being, you know, people saying negative things about me. Now, I've already been through so much of it, I really could care less. Like, I really do not care. That's why, like, you'll see me talk more openly about stay natural. Being all gear is really, unless you plan on competing full time, you plan on making that like your job. Stupid, unless you've been training for four or five years naturally, if you want to just go hop in a year because you really just have nothing better to do and you feel like it's going to validate yourself more. Stupid, that is dumb, that is stemming from an, a hole in your heart where you feel like you need to validate yourself and you're trying to do it through weightlifting. That stuff is dumb. And everyone's going to say, Alex, you're not natty, why are you talking about that? I am natural. I am natural. You know what's crazy is people will be like, yo, Alex, your physique hasn't changed the last four years. they will be like, why do you look the same? And then they'll go on in the same thing and be like, you're not natural. And I'm like, hey, what? Okay, be honest. Like logic here. How does this make sense? 
If I was taking steroids, right, I hope that within four years of me being on social media that my physique would have had some drastic improvements over the last four years. I would hope that I wouldn't be 170 pounds lean at 5'11", 5'10", 5'11", if I was on stuff. Right? Like, just logically think about that. Like, it just makes no sense. So, because those two things are conflicting. It's either my physique has not changed the last four years, or I'm a fake natty. Like, it just makes no sense. I've posted my physique for four years. There's no drastic improvements whatsoever. Um, yeah, so that's my little rant about that part. The other thing is going to be just the faith aspect, bro. So many kids and people that I see today are just lost. And not even just, like, even a lot of the Christians are lost. Like, like we think that we're Christian, and we think that we're followers of Christ, and that's what we label ourselves as. But when we, when we look at the fruit in our lives, and the way that we act and treat others, and the way that we go about our own daily lives, and things that we're pursuing, we do not follow Jesus. Because if you truly follow Jesus, and you knew what he meant, and you knew, and you knew him, you knew him, you wouldn't be doing the things that you're doing. You wouldn't be the person that you are. It's, you will know them by their fruit. You would, that's what it says. You will know them by their fruit. If your fruit... What I mean by that is the stuff that you're producing in your life, your actions, your responses to people, the way you treat other people, the things you're pursuing in life. If that fruit is not good fruit, I cannot believe that you're a true follower of the Lord, right? So I'm here to also make that aware to people who are Christians, but also bring others who aren't Christians to it. So that's another thing I want to be big on here recently, here soon. Uh, another thing, I want to ask you guys, and listen here, what do you want in life? What are your goals? Tell me five years, what are your goals? Take a second to think about it. Give me like three goals, right? All right, you got them, all right? If all of those goals are revolving only around you, oh, I want my physique to take off. I want to win this and this. I, I want to hit a 700 pound deadlift. I want to make this much, this much money, if those are all your goals and they're all just based off of you and they're selfish, you need to rethink them. Because if you think that attaining those goals is what's going to make you a successful person and make you feel satisfied and successful, you are completely wrong. All right? Because I've been at that exact point. This is what's funny. I read a book, this is when I started social media called Think and Grow Rich. Um, and I used to write down like how much money I wanted to be making by this time. I used to think about all the cars, whatever I wanted. And now that I've been in a point where I could attain so much more than that, that and more, I'm like, bro, that, that was such a stupid thing for me to have a goal of. Me thinking that, me reaching that, is going to satisfy me in all these new ways and make me feel successful. No. My goals now have completely changed. I want a family. I want to provide for a loving, beautiful Christian family. I want to leave a mark on a generation of leading kids to Christ in a world where they need it the most. Yeah, I still want to, you know, attain better things. It's not, I'm not saying against that. I'm not saying it's bad to have, like, personal goals, no. But when I say, like, your ultimate goals in life, and they're all revolving around you, if you have selfless goals that attain to, like, helping others, it involves a bigger purpose than just yourself, you'll find yourself being more satisfied, and you'll see more fruit in your life. You'll see more things kind of just... You'll feel more of a sense of peace knowing that you're not working towards something that's just for yourself, but you're working towards like a greater good for others, right? It's the aspect of pouring into other people, friends, family, relationship, uh, that will satisfy you. All right, so if I said, like like I said, when you thought those goals and they're all around you and like just how much money you want to make, where you like all that stuff, then you should rethink them or really humble yourself and rethink them. You should realize if that's where you're finding your validation, a lot of the times, that's that the goals that you say are where you're going to find your validation from. So if that's where you're finding your validation and your fulfillment from are all selfish, selfish types of things, you need to rethink it because it will not last. I promise you it will not last. You're, you're, it's an endless chase. It's an endless chase after something that will never fulfill you. So, so I've been pretty good on the diet, bro. Why is the lighting so weird here? I've been pretty good on the diet. Um, one of the biggest things that's been helping me get leaner lately has been beef broth. Hey, cucumbers and peppers. Now, let me hear me out. When you get a good, like, bone broth, beef, whatever broth, and you put, like, some mushrooms in it, scallions, onions, you put some seasoning, like, it tastes good. That stuff is, like, literally, like, barely any calories whatsoever. And I'm telling you, you drink a good, I don't know how to measure stuff, but, like, 16 ounces plus of that, and you just sip on it. Like, I'm sipping on it while watching, uh, 
what is it called? What is this? The Racing Sim movie. movie. Gran Turismo, fire movie re recommendation. I want to get an eSim set now. Uh, but drank it during the movie, and I'm like, I didn't even have to eat dinner that night. I felt so, like, filled by the broth, and I'm like, yo, I just saved a bunch of calories. Like, this is lit. So, and it's good for you. So that, um, during the day when I get, like, a craving, just kind of, like, endlessly snack on something, I'll just drag my nuts and um, do um, cucumbers. Grab a freaking cucumber out of the fridge and just start chewing on it. Same thing with peppers. Um, it's just super low-cal stuff. It's still filling, you know, holes in your stomach. So when I'm, yeah, because I, I have a pretty, like, I can eat a lot. Like, and when I start eating, I'll binge. Like, I could, I could just go for ages. So as I'm getting closer and closer to this Italy trip, um, where I'll be on an island in four weeks, I'm trying to get leaner and more shredded for that. That's what's been helping me a lot, though. Yeah, maybe maybe zoom in and not show the corona. Come out it came out pretty damn good, I ain't gonna lie. This is, bro. Play Mignon's fire, it's like so tender. says about money make as much as you can in any way that you can even if it's ways that are immoral or sinful to make the money regardless because it can buy you cool things it can it can give you power it can give you validation it can give you more parties you can go out to clubs buy tables it can make you more desirable to women all of these are lies from the devil i'm gonna say what god says about money first i'm gonna say making money is not a bad thing it's when you make making the money the lord your god instead of the true lord right matthew 6 24 25 no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing?